Hey guys, Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over some wavelength, frequency, and energy practice problems. We'll start with the three equations, and then we'll go through a couple of problems that uses the equations, and we'll do them step by step. So let's start with the three equations. Most of the time, you'll have access to these three equations, on, these two equations on the test, but you won't have access to this last one. So that's one that you have to memorize. We'll start with the first one: c equals lambda times frequency. C is the speed of light; is three times ten to the eighth meter per second. This symbol right here, this lambda, lambda stands for wavelength, and it's important to remember that wavelength must always be in meters before you can plug the numbers into the equation. And then lastly, V, this cursive looking V or nu, this is frequency, and that's hertz, or it can either be in uh, seconds to negative one, and these are interchangeable. That's the equation that connects the wavelength and the frequency together. Next equation, we have energy equals Planck's constant h times v. So energy must be in joules. Planck's constant, that's just this um, constant that you'll probably be provided. And then v, again, or new, that's energy. So this is the equation that you use if you have energy, if you want to connect energy and frequency together. And then lastly, we have e equals hc over lambda. e again is energy, and this is in joules. And then Planck's constant, speed of light, and wavelength. Again, that has to be meters. So this is the equation that you would use if you have energy and wavelength in, in the question. So let's start with the first question. First question says that a certain electromagnetic wave, pretty much as it means light, has a wavelength of 625 nanometers. And we have to figure out the frequency. So we have the wavelength, and we want to figure out the frequency. And that's when you use the first equation, because you can see we have wavelength and frequency. So we'll set that up. C equals lambda times frequency. And we're signed for frequency, so that means we have to isolate the new. Or by using algebra, we can divide both sides by lambda. And then that'll just give us V equals C divided by wavelength. And we, and we have C already. That's the speed of light. So that's just going to be 3 times 10 to the eighth meter per second. And wavelength, it gives us the wavelength right here, but this wavelength is in nanometers. Uh, remember, wavelength has to be in meters, so we got to do conversion. And then, so this is where we can use the shortcut. If you have nanometers and you want to get to meters, you can just divide by 10 to the power 9. And then if you have meters and you want to get to man nanometers, you can just multiply by 10 to the power 9. So we'll just do 625 divided by 10 to the power 9, and then I'll give you 6.25 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Or if you have to show your work with dimensional analysis, you can do 625 nanometers multiplied by 1 meter to, in every 1 meter, there's 10 to the 9 nanometers. And then that way you can see the nanometers cancel out. And then you will get the same number. Um, and that's just the same thing as saying 625 divided by 10 to the 9. So then now we have the, the meters. We can plug that in here, 6.25 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Notice that the meters cancel out. Then we enter this into our calculator. So 3 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by 6.25 to the power of negative 7. And we'll get 4.80 uh, times 10 to the 14th. And we can report frequency as either hertz or seconds to the negative 1. I'm just going to leave this as seconds to the negative 1. Or we can also leave that as per second, and that's the same thing. So that's the first question. That's just a question where we have wavelength, and then we have to solve for frequency. Now, if we had frequency, and we want to solve for wavelength, uh, it's the same process, but then we would just be isolating the wavelength instead of frequency. All right, let's take a look at the, the next one. So in the next question, it says that the blue, the blue color of light results from the scattering of sunlight. Uh, it says that we have blue light. And it has this certain frequency of 7.5 times 10 to the negative 4 hertz. And then we have to calculate the wavelength in nanometers that's associated with this, this radiation. So this is the opposite. We have the frequency, and then we have to solve for the wavelength. So again, since we're dealing with wavelength and frequency, we're going to be using the first equation. C equals the wavelength times the frequency. Then to isolate the frequency, we just divide both sides by the wavelength. And then that. That would give us that the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. Um, the speed of light is just the constant again, 3 times 10 to the eighth meter per second. And then the frequency, it gives it to us right here. And it's in the correct units. We want it in hertz or negative 1, or I mean hertz or seconds to negative 1. And it's currently in hertz. So then we just plug that in 7.5 times 10 to the 14th. 
I'm just going to switch that to per second or second to negative one. So you can see that the seconds can cancel out. And then we could just enter this in the calculator. 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 7.5 to the power of 14. And then that will give us 4 times, let's see, in terms of sig figs, we have two sig figs right here. So this would be 4.0 times 10 to the negative 7 and we'll be left with meters because you can see the, set, the per second canceled out. But this question wants uh, wants to uh, solve for this in nanometers. So again, we have meters, we want to get to nanometers. Meters to nanometers, we would multiply by 10 to 9. Um, so we just multiply this by 10 to 9 and it will get 400 nanometers as our answer. What is, let's take a look at the, the next one. So the, the next one is just telling us to calculate the energy associ associated with that blue light uh, in joules. Well, let's get rid of, let's get rid of that. Uh, we just need the wavelength. So here we have, we have to solve for, for joules and we're, we're dealing with energy so we can use either this equation uh, if we want to connect to a frequency or we can use this equation if we want to connect it with wavelength. And I'll just show you, uh, show you both how we do this. So we'll solve for the first one. E equals Planck's constant time frequency. Planck's constant is just 6.626 times 10 to the negative 4 joules per second. We can multiply by the frequency that was given to us earlier. 7.5 times 10 to the 14th seconds to negative 1 or, or hertz or per second. You can see that the seconds will cancel out and then we'll be left with our answer in joules, which is exactly what we wanted. So we just do 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 multiplied by 7.5 to the power of 14. And that'll give us 4. Point, uh, let's see how many sig figs we want. Again, just two sig figs. So this is 4.96 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, but since we only want two sig figs, we will round that up to 5.0 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, just because the number after the second sig fig is bigger than five, so we gotta round that up and it becomes 5.0. So that's how we would solve for the energy in joules by using the uh, frequency, but if let's, we can also solve for it using wavelength because we know what the wavelength of the blue light is. In part A, we solve for the wavelength and we found that it was 4.0 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Since we have the wavelength, we can use the second equation to connect the wavelength and the energy. So we have E equals HC over lambda. H is a Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds, and then the speed of light, c, 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second, and then divided by the wavelength. Wavelength has to be meters. We found the meters originally, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. And you can see that the, it's kind of hard, a little hard to see right here, but this was meters per second. So notice the meters will cancel out, the seconds will cancel out, and you're left with joules. And we'll get the same answer, 5.0 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So if the question asks you to solve for energy and gives you frequency, you're going to use this. You're going to use the second equation. But if the question asks you to solve for energy and you're given the wavelength, then you're going to use this third equation. All right, let's take a look. Actually, one other thing. Notice in part B, it asks us to calculate the energy of a single photon. Just know that these equations with energy applies to single photon. But a lot of times in class, you might the you might get a question to ask, how about the energy? for a molar photon. So what if it asks you how much energy is there in, in, in mole and they want it in kilojoules? So if you want to do that, we have the energy of a single photon, so we'll just say 5.0 times 10 to negative 19 joules for a single photon. Uh, we got to get that into kilojoules, so we multiply by the conversion factor for every one kilojoules there are a thousand joules, so that way you can get rid of the, the joules. And then now to get per mole, I will put photon on the top so I can get rid of the photon and then put mole on the bottoms. Um, so that way the photons can cancel out. And we know that for every one mole of anything, there's Avogadro's number of that thing. So that'll be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And so that's how we would 
saw for um, the kilojoules per mole. So whenever you want to get the mole of something, of, of a photon, just multiply by Avogadro's number. And then if you want, if you have a mole and you want to get back to uh, a single photon, just divide by Avogadro's number. All right, let's take a look at the last example. So in this the last example is asking us, what is the wavelength of a wave that has 7.65 times 10 to the negative 17 joules? It's, it gives us joules, so that means we're given the energy and they want us to solve for the wavelength, which is uh, lambda. So we just look at which equation has energy and lambda in it. And this is the last equation. So we'll start by writing out the equation, energy equals hc over lambda. And then we can use algebra to isolate. Uh, isolate lambda. So just cross multiply first and we'll get E times lambda equals H times C and then divide both sides by E so then you get lambda equals HC divided by E. H is Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to the negative 4 joules per second. C is the speed of light 3 times 10 to the eighth meter per second. And then we're going to divide that by the uh, energy. We want to make sure that the energy is in joules, and it is already in joules. So we can just plug that in, 7.65 7 times 10 to the negative 7 joules. And we can cross out the like units. The joules are going to cancel out the per second, and second here is going to cancel out. So we're going to be left with the, the wavelength in meters. So we'll, we can plug it in into a calculator, 6.626 to the power of negative 34 multiplied by 3 to the power of 8, divided by 7.65 to the power of negative 17. And then that will give us 2 point, and how many sig figs do we want? We have 3 sig figs here, so final answer should have 3 sig figs. 2.60 times 10 to the negative 9, and what unit should it be? It should be in meters. But, you know, what if this question asks about nanometers. So once again, if we have meters and we want to get to nanometers, we just multiply by 10 to the 9. And we do that. We'll get 2.60 nanometers. And that's it. That's a couple problems dealing with wavelength, frequency, and energy. So really just read the problem and look at what you're given and what you're asked for. So if you're given wavelength and you have to solve for frequency, then use this one. Or if you're solve given frequency and have to suffer wavelength. So if you're just given frequency and wavelength, use the first equation. If you have to, if you're dealing with energy and frequency, then use the second one, and then use the last one if you're dealing with energy and wavelength. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.